Greetings, listeners. I'm Dr. Kristen Stehauer, Academic Vice President and Provost at Northwood University, and we are so pleased to welcome you to our Faculty Forum, a podcast aimed at giving listeners an insider's view into the brilliant minds and expertise of Northwood University's distinguished faculty members. Over the course of this series, we explore a wide range of topics from business and economics to entrepreneurship and innovation. Each episode features in-depth conversations with professors who share insights, research and experiences to educate, inspire, and engage our listeners. Today's guest is Dr. Alicia Beckrow, Assistant Professor and Innovation Program Curriculum Lead for Marketing at Northwood University. Dr. Beckrow is here today to discuss the psychology of consumer behavior. Welcome, Alicia. Thank you, Dr. Stehauer. Thanks for joining us. And we'd love to hear how you came to Northwood University and uh, how long have you been at Northwood? I've been in Northwood off and on for about 16 years now. So when I was off somewhere else, I taught at a few other universities uh, in advertising, marketing, uh, marketing communication. Um, and uh, I, then I moved on and worked in marketing for a while where some of our clients were uh, Fortune 500 global companies and then anywhere down to uh, nonprofits, uh, small local nonprofits. So got some good experience there. And then when I finished my PhD, there was uh, a vacancy at Northwood for marketing faculty. So I was happy to be able to fill that. We were delighted for you to return to Northwood University and bring that industry experience and academic credential to benefit our students. So thanks for coming back. And when we talk about the psychology of consumer behavior, you bring that alive for our students. What are the factors that influence consumer decisions? Well, the study of consumer behavior is looking at how consumers select, uh, purchase, and use their products and services uh, to fulfill the needs that they have. So we look at things like uh, psychological factors, so their motivations, their emotions, their attitudes and beliefs, uh, their perceptions, all gets wrapped up in those factors. And then their social factors, so there's their family and friends and people that influence them, the clubs and organizations they belong to or aspire to belong to, uh, as well as what uh, personally makes us up, our personal factors, our age, um, income, lifestyle, and things like that. And also cultural factors uh, make up um, how uh, p consumers uh, make their decision-making process. So it kind of thinking about uh, that kind of reminds me of uh, purchasing a car. Uh, we've just had our auto show. Great illustration. Yes. And that can be part of the decision-making process for someone. Having visited the auto show, their need for a car, you start doing research. Uh, there might be certain makes and models that you're interested in, but you want to see, you know, what's out there, what's available, um, talk to friends and family and see what their experiences are, people that you trust. And, you know, auto show, you can sit in the cars, you can talk to the students about uh, what the features are and consider the features that you actually need uh, before you make your decision. So you are, uh, are what are you going to use the car for? Is it just to get from point A to point B? Or do you like all the bells and whistles? Do you need that? Uh, what can you afford? Uh, so there's lots of things wrapped up in, you know, your next car purchase. So uh, between deciding that you need one, you've got your motivation and actually doing the research and then making the purchase. There's all these questions and research that you'll conduct and and ultimately make your purchase. I know you're a big believer in hands-on and experiential learning. How do you help bring that to life and give our students hands-on experience? We do. So we have various classes within marketing. There's a consumer behavior course where we try to do some some self-analysis because I think that's always interesting is, you know, consumer behavior Sometimes we can identify, well, why did I buy that? Or, you know, why why did I want that brand versus another brand? And and so that's trying to figure that out and pull that out. So sometimes I have them do some self-analysis of the last thing they purchased. Perhaps it's the car example. And so we have to, we talk that out. Uh, but also I send them out in the field, so to speak, and they'll, they'll do some consumer research. They'll do some shopping observation research. So they'll go in a store, they'll look, they'll go to the potato chip aisle and see how are people shopping for potato chips? What are they selecting? What flavors? And also watching for 
perhaps what other brands they're wearing, uh, what bags they're carrying, what other things are in their cart, just to get a full picture of who these consumers are. So then we'll write up reports and share our, our knowledge and see, you know, what kind of data that we determine, you know, based on what's already out there, what we might know about certain brands, but then what what did they observe? What did, That's what so did they find? That's so fascinating too, to, to look at what potato chips somebody might be selecting and then look at all the we're we're really walking billboards for many of our consumer decisions aren't we by the clothes we wear the brands and absolutely because that can that can really key into yes what you're wearing what other things are in your shopping cart can key into well we now we kind of understand their lifestyle more now we understand what's important to them Uh, maybe their family makeup maybe you know other people in their households and things like that so we can we can gather a lot from uh, some observation Oh, that's wonderful. And then they bring that field experience back to the classroom and then you analyze, they analyze it Correct. and really turn it into something meaningful from a marketing profession. Exactly. Standpoint. Because before we start, though, we also think of, um, you know, we're we're doing a little bit covertly is how we usually do it. Uh, but you could be customers are aware they're being observed and that could lend a lot more, uh, more different information. Uh, it could be a setup where um, it's it's a, a a pretend store. It's not the real store. And so again, they know they're being observed, but it looks like a real store. So there's all kinds of ways we can get to the same uh, type of information. But we, so we discuss all the pluses and minuses and how we want to do it. And then we develop the study together and then they conduct it and then bring back the results. Oh, that's great. Could you, I know an area of interest for you is research on the psychology of marketing and consumer behavior. Yes. So there's a lot out there. So it, it does make fascinating reading. So I, I'll keep it to a few things that I've been reading most recently. So some of it is shopping behavior, uh, purchase making process, as well as um, research process. So some of the studies have found that it is people are willing to try new brands, uh, try new stores, try new e-commerce sites. But the way they research might vary. Uh, So we have to be where they are. So if they want to research online, businesses have to be online. They have to have the website or an app or be on the social media channels that our consumers are using. So it's important to provide the information that they're looking for in that way if they're looking online. And there's a chance they're researching online, but actually purchasing in the store. And it could flip as well. Some people like to purchase uh, online after they've already researched in the store. They want to touch something, try it, try it on, talk to somebody about it, and then they'll end up purchasing online. Get it shipped to home for free, possibly. Exactly. exactly. So it might be a consideration of an organization to... uh, to merge that online and offline experience to make sure they're working together so we know, okay, what do they want to do online? What do they want offline? And and make sure it's working together so we can meet where they are. That's a great example of how we include digital marketing in our marketing and marketing communications programs. Yes, yes, because there is a, a lot of out there that businesses aren't sure what to do yet in that space. So we've definitely got an advantage there where our students are earning certifications in uh, email marketing, social media marketing, uh, e-commerce and things like that. So they can go off and help uh, organizations that maybe aren't sure how to get into that online space yet. Uh, They can help them get started there. So let's unpack that a little bit. That's not only are they earning their degree, but they're getting industry recognized certifications while they're earning their degree alongside, right? Yes, we've got lots of uh, Google offers certifications, HubSpot, those are well known, as well as we're working with Digital Marketing Institute, who is affiliated with American Marketing Association, and they're providing some of our uh, certifications as well. So we're trying to include that, they're getting the the classroom education as well as uh, those certifications. So thinking about the arena of strategies business can can take, because you mentioned there's a lot of need out there and a lot of businesses are, they know they need better marketing strategies and speaking of marketing very holistically, um, but they don't know what to do and how to connect with diverse customer preferences. What can they do? 
Well, the thing is, we have access or businesses have access to a lot of information now, a lot of data about consumer behavior. And so some of that is and some of that is what we're trying to uh, teach in the classroom as well is what do we do with that? So customers know that our information is being gathered. So the analytics side. Exactly. Things. We know that's being collected. So there's some expectation that we're going to get maybe better service or a, a product more specific to us, or maybe a sales offer more specific to us. And there is some of that expectation. And those some of um, the research shows that sometimes they're just disappointed if they don't get that because they know that data has been collected. So some things that uh, businesses could do strategy wise is, you know, have a plan for that data, uh, do some reading in consumer behavior area. Uh, there's a lot of things that already exist um, in studies with, in consumer behavior. So there's a lot of information out there that they can use to create uh, perhaps new products and services that touch on an unmet need, need that the they have a core product offering and that's perhaps doing well, but there's something out there that uh, a need that isn't being met and they could be the ones that offer those products and services. And in that, with all of the information and data that organizations have now, they can also uh, be more specific with their marketing communication plans, with their sales strategy. So if I know, the more I know about you, the more I know what your problems and pain points are. I know what your, uh, influences are. So the psychological, the social, everything we talked about earlier, I know what those issues are for you specifically. So then I can create a, a really personalized sales strategy with you. We can talk, build some trust. I, I can, you can, you'll feel heard by me because I understand you and I understand your prob problem specifically and not trying to address everybody's problems all at once. So Building that trust between business and consumers is really important. And, and similarly with the marketing communication is if we know more about the consumers, we can create really targeted messaging, you know, the copy that we write, the images that we use. Again, they'll feel represented, they'll feel heard and seen and uh, hopefully more engaged with the brand as well. So that could lead to perhaps more uh sales, great word of mouth. If you're creating a great experience for consumers, they'll have uh they'll come back and perhaps bring their friends and family. That was a really fascinating point you made earlier about how consumers know the data are being collected behind the scenes and that increases their expectations for yeah. businesses to serve them in a more customized way. It does. There was, uh, there's a lot of research out there on that, that I've been going over lately and, and some of the discussions we've been having in class too, because I'm just curious about, you know, does it vary between generations? Does it vary between culture or does that vary between product segments? You know, and when it comes are to you the finding? Like, I, that is, that was the point of, I haven't found anything yet uh, out there. I'm sure it is out there, but I have not read uh, any details on that yet. Uh, so I only have my class discussion <laughs> that I could class, share with you. What, what are you so learning in class? Mostly Gen Z and millennials in there. And they're saying kind of the same thing that I mentioned, that they're it, the expectation is, okay, we know that you're collecting all this data. So Show us what you got, you know, make this a, wow, really, a unique, yeah, yeah. Create exactly. a great experience for I want me. a unique experience. I want a great experience. Uh, I want an experience that I'll want to repeat, come back to you again and again. And like I said, bring friends and family. What a great tip for businesses to develop more loyalty. And I know we have a lot of business listeners out there. Yeah. So, and th cause there is so much choice yeah. that people have. What are other insights on the changing landscape of consumer trends? Um, some consumer trends would be uh, social shopping I've been reading about. So that's if you're on your social media channels, your Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, uh, that people want to, when they see the product that they like uh, posted, they want to be able to click on it, buy it. You know, they they liked it. They made the decision. They want it right now. They don't want to go to somebody's e-commerce site or they don't want to go into the store. Make it easy. Exactly. And you don't want to lose them along any of those paths either. So make it easy for them to get it. And I think the most interesting thing of that to me was I kind of think, well, sure, Gen Z, that makes sense. 
but Gen X and baby boomers are doing it too. So that could be a good insight. So for... it's not necessary, necessarily generational. Exactly. I've not personally done that yet myself, but apparently people in my generation are are getting into that. Wow, that's really fascinating. And uh, just so our listeners can get to know you better, what kinds of things do you, uh, clearly you're you're dedicated uh, in the marketing space and, and uh, you're just passionate about it, but um, what do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? When you have uh, limited, yeah, I know you have limited free time. Reading yeah. about cons- consumer <laughs> behavior. And, no. I do. I, I'm part of a book club. Um, I like to do things with friends and family, movies. I like to read uh, for fun, not only about consumer behavior. Uh, and I like to write as well. What kinds of things do you write? I, I like to write short uh, short stories and just kind of journal. And um, I've, I've been a copywriter before, so I, I like to sometimes write more strategically and as well. Uh, so yeah, that's I think that's me. Wow, that's great. And what inspires you about Northwood University students? I really enjoy and in kind of the reason why I wanted to come back is the the class sizes are small. They're all interested in business. And no matter what major is in my class, because I will have some uh, students in marketing courses where uh, they're not necessarily marketing majors. So it's really great to get that variety and have them all work together and learn from a finance major as well as accounting and entrepreneurship major. And and there's just all kinds of points of view to to get to what's this new next idea that we're trying to work on for our, for our class project. And so I just like that they're very focused in business, that they're passionate about that. They know what they want at 18. I didn't. So I'm always impressed by that. Uh, I like the the people that I work with as well. I really like everyone in in my department and in the curriculum. I think we're bringing great things to the program and excited to see where it goes. What's one of the recent changes to the curriculum? We are converting our fashion major into it's going to be merchandising and marketing. And so we did some research over the summer about the industry. So retail, apparel, merchandising, um, visual merchandising. And we talked to some industry professionals. We do have advisory councils that guide us on this as well. And they fully support this. They're excited for these changes that uh, we want to add uh, sustainability courses, some retail management courses, uh, branding and marketing communication courses, because just looking at the the changing landscape of that industry, those are the areas that our students could fill when it's time for internship, for jobs, uh, because we're, they're not necessarily, some might want to go into more design and that's great. And some want to be managers and, and run their own shops and, and be their own, uh, uh, have their own brand, start their own brand and develop that. So there's a lot of avenues that they can take with this, with this new transition. So it sounds like fashion is under that umbrella and yet it is extended even further. Yes. Well, I know you dove right in uh, to that curriculum redesign, re-engineering, and spoke with experts from around the country on that. Yes, and we do have people from around the country helping with our classes, and they're the industry professionals. They've had that experience in that space, and so students are learning from from the best, and they they have the most current knowledge, and um, we'll bring more and more speakers and faculty like that to campus, so they'll continue to, to learn and, and be ready for when they're out in the workforce. Well, you mentioned that our students love to learn from the best, and you are one of the best. Dr. Beckrow, we are so pleased that you're here, and thank you for taking your time to join us on the podcast and share a bit more about what you do and your passion for marketing and consumer behavior. You really bring it to life. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So thanks to our listeners for joining us today as we bridge the gap between academics and industry and provide valuable insights into the world of business and beyond. Subscribe now to stay informed and be inspired by the voices shaping the future at Northwood University where you get your podcasts. And be sure to follow us on social media at Northwood U. Thanks for joining us, listeners. Thank you, Dr. Beckrow. Thank you.